Hi everybody, this is Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in beautiful Kerrville, Texas. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Today, someone writes in, Dear Pastor, why do some churches teach that women should not cut their hair or wear slacks? Well, such churches do exist. Generally, from what I've been able to find, the churches that teach this, that it's sinful, for women to wear slacks. Let's start with that one first. Uh, we'll deal with the hair cutting in just a moment. First, let's do the slacks, the pants. Uh, generally, where they get this from is Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Moses there writes, A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Now, to the no-pants crowd, this seems like a slam dunk. Now, traditionally, you now look around. Men wear pants. Uh, women wear skirts. Therefore, women break the commandments by wearing skirts. The end. But slow down there, because it's not that simple. We shouldn't read the Bible as if it were written today, with today's standards in mind, uh, because it wasn't. There, there's a context to this legislation about men and women's clothing. The first question that we should ask is, well, what did men and women wear back in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament? Now, interestingly enough, the word pants, like the things you wear on your, on your legs, that word is never mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, there are a few instances of the word trousers being used, but even then, the word trousers is always used in a specific context. Uh, trousers are always a linen undergarment that's worn by Aaron and his sons, i.e. the priests and the high priest, uh, while they're doing their priestly service in the tabernacle. For instance, Exodus 28, verse 42 says that Aaron and his sons were to wear linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. And so every time the word trousers is used in the OT, it's always these, uh, these priestly garments. So then, well, what did people wear in the Old Testament? Well, garments. That's about it. Uh, the words used to, to describe men, when men and women's clothing, excuse me, in the Old Testament and even into the New, uh, are the same. Uh, they wear robes. They wear tunics, which could go down just past the knees. They wear garments. They wear undergarments. But really, that's about it. Uh, there's no, you know, gender-specific clothing. Ruth, I guess should, I should say, Ruth does wear a shawl, so that would be a feminine piece of clothing in the Old Testament, but really that's about it. Now, that doesn't mean that there was no distinction between man and woman's clothing. I imagine uh, that women's clothing was probably cut differently because women's bodies are different from men. Uh, but the point is, nobody wore pants back in the day. Uh, so Deuteronomy 22.5 isn't a slam dunk for the no pants crap. So that brings us to the big question. What is Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 actually about? Well, it could be about idolatry. There are lots of scholars uh, that think that cross-dressing, to one extent or another, uh, was, was a key feature of some Mesopotamian pagan religions. It's entirely possible. Uh, most of the ancient Near Eastern religions in the Fertile Crescent uh, had some sort of a sexual component to them. Uh, either way, it definitely condemns cross-dressing and calls it the same thing that it calls homosexuality in the Old Testament, i.e. an abomination. And so you know, the link between cross-dressing and homosexuality is quite obvious. The, the, the reason that these are here then, or that they're named, is because homosexuality and cross-dressing are inversions of God's created order. Uh, that is the, what we'll call the male-female polarity, uh, that God created mankind male and female, you know, a binary. Uh, that's ultimately what this passage is about. God made them male and female. And so man and woman can't be interchanged because they're not the same thing, both psychologically, biologically, and then as far as the roles which God had gave them as well. Uh, to dress in the opposite sex's clothing, then, is a violation of that created order. Now, does a woman today wearing pants, does that mean she's dressing like a man? I don't think so, because women's pants are different than men's. Uh, they're cut different than men's. Plus, and here's the big thing, if it's a sin specifically to wear pants, then wouldn't the Lord have said so in the scriptures? Now, let's switch gears and let's go to the other passage that the no-pants crowd often gravitates towards, 
And that is 1 Timothy 2, verses 9 and 10. Paul there says, The women are to adorn themselves in modest apparel, with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. Now, obviously, there's no mention of pants in this. What is Paul telling these women in the in this church to do, in the Ephesian church to do? He's saying dress with propriety, meaning dress appropriately. Dress in women's clothing. Okay, sure. Uh, but they're also then to dress in women's clothing with moderation, that is, with modesty. And so he lists things like braided hair, uh, braided hair, gold, pearls. You know, these were the extreme, the extremity of women's fashion in the day. Uh, People that wore these, women that wore these things, uh, they dressed to impress. Uh, to impress, not to impress. No, they dressed to impress. And so um, he, um, he says, you know, dress appropriately for the situation, but also dress modestly. Because when a woman dresses immodestly, two things often happen. The first is that uh, a woman who is dressed immodestly is going to incite easily, or could possibly incite lust in the hearts of men around her. The other side of that is women who dress immodestly very often incite uh, envy or jealousy uh, in the hearts of women who see them as well. Then. And so neither one of these uh, runs in the way of the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself, which is why Paul says, you know, don't clothe yourself immodestly or in inappropriate ways. The point is dress nicely wear feminine clothing. It's not a sin to look nice. Others will notice your God-given beauty then. With all of this, he says, you know, don't dress like this. Instead, dress modestly, but really clothe yourself with good works, which flow from faith in Christ then. Uh, don't be so wrapped up in your outer appearance uh, that it becomes the primary thing that you're focused upon. Rather, focus upon the good works that are flowing from your God-given faith in Christ. Now, as far as cutting your hair goes, uh, this is another one that we can do in this kind of the same vein. If we go to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 14 and 15, Paul writes, uh, Does not even nature itself tell you that a man, if a man has long hair, it is to his dishonor? But if a woman has long hair, it's to her glory, for her hair was given to her as a covenant, covering. What he's saying is that women by nature have longer hair than men. Their hair just seems to grow faster. Uh, he brings us up to fortify a cultural tradition of wearing head coverings. The whole point of that is, well, God by nature gives them covering in their long hair. Therefore, they should probably keep this cultural tradition of wearing head coverings in a place like a church. Uh, now, for more information on that, check out a video we did a couple months ago. Uh, I believe it's called uh, Should Women Wear Head Coverings to Church? And that's going to cover a little bit of this again. Again, women have long hair by nature. Men don't. And when a man grows his hair uh, much past his shoulders, at that point then, he's looking more like a woman. The point in all of this is, can women cut their hair short? Sure. There's no divine law then that says that women must have long hair, or that uh, says thou shalt not cut thy hair. Um, it's one of those things of, if you're doing it to look like a man, if you're doing it to invert the created order, then it's sinful. Now, when churches claim uh, that women must wear long skirts, or that women must grow their hair out, if they're putting necessity on these things, they're ultimately binding consciences where scripture has not bound consciences. Uh, you know, if some work of the law is taught or believed to be necessary for Christians to be true Christians, then you're violating Paul's principles laid down in Romans and Galatians, especially Galatians 2.16, where he says, by works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And so if someone declares a woman to be sinning uh, in these matters, the best response is simply to say, which one of the Ten Commandments are we violating in this? You know, as long as we're not, like we said a moment ago, willfully trying to suppress the God-ordered uh, creation of the man and woman polarity, that there are differences, as long as we're not trying to make men and women interchangeable, like cross-dressing specifically does, then I see no problem with women wearing pants and having short hairdos, um, as long as it's done with modesty, uh, and as long as it is done with propriety appropriate. Again, for the sake of not inciting men to lust and not inciting women to envy. Dress appropriately, be modest, and as St. Paul says, ladies, adorn yourself chiefly with good works. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your question. This was a good one. 
If you've got a question, send an email to atpholycross at gmail.com, atpholycross at gmail.com. We'll put you in the queue, and we'll get to you as soon as we're able. We'll see you next time.